Hi, I'm Julian Page. I've been canoeing for 10 years. I've been making YouTube videos of my canoe trips with GoPros for quite some time now. Uh, so I've learned quite a few things and we're going to go through some of the tips that I've got for you. We're going to start with some of the simple methods of using GoPros for filming your canoe trips. Uh, we're then going to go into gimbals, how to keep the horizon level, start making things look a bit more professional. Uh, we're going to go into some of the boom techniques I've been using recently and I'm going to give you at the end some great tips on how to put that YouTube video together and make it really interesting. If you like what you see please subscribe to my channel and then you won't miss out with any of the canoeing videos that I put out there. Let's get started. Mounting a GoPro to the front of your canoe is a really great thing to do. Here I've got a plate that's been screwed down and you can get some great forward shots. Something you should try is to lift the, the GoPro up with a little extension pole. That will give you a slightly different perspective, get the nose out of the shot. And also think about flipping the GoPro around, point it backwards, uh, and again, get, get some fresh views, mix it up. The next thing you can try is a bit more flexible, it's not fixed. Get these little clamps from any hardware store. Get yourself the correct bolt to go into a camera. You can fit it anywhere. You can fit it onto the seat, you can fit it onto the thwart. One of the things you should definitely try is strapping on a chesty. It's a useful mount. Um, gives you some good shots, gives you some good variety. There is a problem though, as you're paddling, the shaft of the paddle is going to be in the way, your hands are going to be in the way, and there's another problem as well. The nature of paddling is you're going to turn, you're going to be twisting your body. So what you get on the shot is this constant movement. It's a bit distracting. So for me, the chesty isn't really the way to go unless you want to put the paddle down and just coast for a little while and, and keep the paddle out of the way. Okay, the next simple thing we'll try is uh, strapping the camera to your head. It's probably better, get a better angle. Uh, I don't do it that much. Uh, primarily, a couple of things. It makes me feel quite self-conscious. Uh, secondly, and I think from, from the video end point of view, uh, I, I'm never sure exactly where the camera's pointing. Uh, I can't look at the back screen, so that's a problem for me. Uh, and unless you think about it and very carefully as you're, as you're paddling, keep your head still. Um, you know, it can, you can still get bad shots. I think you probably get the, the top of your paddle still in, in, on the screen, so that's not great. Um, and yeah, every time, every time you look left, look right, it, the, 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 the shot's moving around. It's hard to keep your head still. Uh, so this isn't a favourite, but again, it's worth trying. The final simple bit of uh, camera rig to try is to put it on your helmet. Um, I think this is quite good. Uh, I can set up the shot, make sure it's nice and straight, check I've got the angle right. Uh, it just gets the camera a little bit higher rather than it being here it's a little bit higher the top of your paddle isn't so much in the way So we're going to talk about gimbals now. Uh, the reason we're talking about gimbals is because there's two things that I do not like to see on a canoeing video. One is a rocking motion side to side. If you're tandem paddling and you're not in sync, bow paddler and the stern paddler are out, are out then they're not paddling in at the same time, you get this rocking motion. Um, anytime 
you have a strong pry off the off the back there's a rocking motion and all of that just doesn't look good it doesn't look professional it doesn't look smooth so that's one thing the other thing that's really bad is a horizon that does this and it's bad enough when the horizon is 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 solid it's mountains it's hills it's something like that but a water horizon that's like this just looks wrong water sits level we know that that's what's natural to the eye you start using a, a hero 4 and you've got problems haven't you uh, there'll, there'll be a tilt to the side something like that uh, i wasn't using any fancy editing software so i'm starting to think right let's use some gimbals so let me show you a couple of things um, this is something that i bought i think the idea is that you walk along and it's stabilized and the idea is when you've got the camera on there it it, it doesn't move too much um, but every time I've got something like a pole here and typically I'm planning on using fishing bank sticks every time I've got a pole here uh, potentially going up there if it can do this it keeps hitting the the bank stick and the, the noise comes through the noise is basically ruined I want only that articulation I just want to stop the rocking motion that way okay I made my own gimbal I made it so that it only articulates in one direction so there's no way this piece could come and hit the the bank stick um, I used a, uh, a, a skateboard bearing block of nylon machined it out welded a couple of nuts together um, and there we go I will show you this I've got an odd little piece of metal here this is just so I could make those fine adjustments with where the central gravity down here was. Uh, if I found that it was uh, on a certain day, it was like it was tilted like that, I'd want to put it out to then bring the, the central gravity slightly out. So yeah, I learned a lot of things, solved the problems, but I needed it because it was a Hero 4. This, this worked quite nicely. I had it at the back of the boat of it inside I made a wooden block that I glued in about here uh, had a little clamp at the back and I would hold it about there didn't get in the way of my paddling at the back so there was a couple of times I had a problem with this uh, I was on the spay above Loch Inch where the, the spay is very narrow uh, we got snagged into some some bankside bushes this basically got snagged up in the in the, the little trees on the bank um, as we tried to pull out of it uh, this was bent over popped the piece of wood out and I couldn't use it for the rest of the trip I uh, didn't have any glue with me um, the other problem I had on the River Eden in Cumbria um, hit a rock turned over this thing then hit the rocks on the bottom of the river snapped off uh, and I lost it it's uh, it's not a clear river it's a very uh, it was it was very colored at the time had no idea where it was on the riverbed uh, the river was too deep and powerful I couldn't retrieve it so the annoying thing was I lost the GoPro I lost the memory card and I lost all the footage from the from, from the first days filming now with Hero 6, Hero 7, they've got great image stabilization. I no longer need the gimbal. Gimbals aren't needed. Um, plus, I'm using editing software now so that if, if something's slightly amiss with the horizon, I can edit that out, no problems. Uh, so I don't need all that complication. Uh, if you do a lot of prying off the gunnel like I do, um, the noise of a, a wooden shaft, paddle shaft, against the gunnel all that transmits noise and it, it, it's it's interference it distracts so i've put a rubber grip it's in, designed for a badminton racket i've put that in the right place for me on my paddle shaft that way as i'm paddling along every time it touches the gunnel that noise doesn't transmit to the camera so i saw that ray goodwin was making some youtube videos where he was using a boom sometimes at the front sometimes at the back gave him some really good perspectives 
and I thought it was a good idea. So I looked into it and what I came up with was some equipment by a company called Scotty. They're a Canadian company. Uh, I think they're often used by fishermen on sit-on kayaks. They used to hold your rods out uh, but they can also be used for holding a boom out with your GoPro on and I think they're, they're really good for this purpose. This has got to be on the outside. Anything like this is potentially going to snag. Um, so it sits quite nicely. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but when it's on, when it's on, it's on. That's not, that's not shifting. There are some grooves in the top that these ridges locate into. Um, there is a little keyway here that will only go in at one angle. So you've got to find that and there that's the angle that it wants to go into and now you can adjust it around until you've got whatever angle you're looking for so i'm going to just push that down this then has loads of all the different angles you might want uh, i can pop it back up i can move it around i can have it pointing towards the front, have it pointing towards the back. Down in the bottom of that tube there is uh, a little piece of plastic going across ways. Um, the idea is to locate your fishing rod or whatever. So I've created on this pole uh, a little groove. You know I've just hacksawed out in the plastic there's something that's going to locate into that. This blue this blue extending boom, all it is, my local hardware store, um, they sell something like this. It comes with a brush, God knows what it's for. Uh, not interested in that, but this can extend and not interested in the rubber handle, that can come off. And what I found, another thing I found online was this. You can buy, basically with the same diameter, these plastic elbow joints with the little serrated teeth that grip together. You can buy these, glue them on, epoxy glue, and then what you end up with is this. This now can fit into the rocket launcher. Uh, I can extend out, I can adjust this angle, and it's a bit like a giant selfie stick. Um, there's enough adjustment here that I can get the right angle on the GoPro so it's close to being horizontal. So here's a close-up of the, uh, the type of equipment I've got for mounting the GoPro onto the bank stick. It's got a little brass adapter to go from the, the thread size that they use for fishing to the thread size that's used for cameras. Um, I've got a ball and socket type clamp here, so I've got a big variety of angles. So we've got it mounted um, near the thwart, pointing backwards. Maybe this would be a good shot if I was soloing and I was using the kneeling thwart. I've got plenty of adjustment here. Um, what you've got to do really any time you're going to change this shot change the position change anything so you need to come into the, the bank uh, get out you really need to stand behind the camera see what's in view try and get the angle right make any little adjustments that you need to um, you just can't it, it, you can't really do that uh, by eye from the, from the back turning around uh, it's probably safer to do it at the by the bank. Um, so let's say you come into the bank again, I think the first thing I'd do is turn off the record, pop this out, just lay it down somewhere, um, probably leave this in. Unscrew that all the way and I'm going to shift this now right to the back, as far into the back as I can. So we're now right at the stern of the boat. It's as clamped as far along the gunnel as I can. Um, and now we're gonna get a really good third person perspective.
that looks really good. We could we could sw swap it around, put it at the front, uh, have the selfie stick, the, the, the boom pointing straight at us. We can move this to the front, um, spin this around, point it down, having a look at the, the, the front of the boat as the water's coming through. That's a really good shot. The third thing I'd suggest you try is have it out to the side and you get a really interesting perspective. Uh, and yeah, you, you, this just gives you so many more variations. Have this pointing straight up, have this out so it, you, you, you're looking down like you're, it's a drone. So there are some points on safety you need to think about. Anytime you're using these booms, uh, you've got something potentially sticking outside of the boat. Uh, things that are going to snag if you get too close to the bankside vegetation. Uh, things that could cause a problem if you capsize. So really what I would suggest on safety is know what you're doing. Um, know that you've got enough space to use these booms don't use them on a small river in particularly a small river that you don't know uh, you need to know that when you're going around a corner there's not going to be a tree in the way uh, it's enough of a problem making sure the boat is safe without having to worry about a boom uh, but if you've got a bit more space and you know there's no trees in the way you're not going to snag in anything then these booms can be good as soon as you've got a small river with lots of vegetation or somewhere where you haven't been before, keep things safe. Use, uh, use those little clamps on the inside of the boat. Uh, use a, uh, a head uh, mount, use a chesty, things like that. Uh, do not use these booms if you think you're going to hit rocks and capsize, if you think that there's too much vegetation and you're going to snag up, okay? Um, so safety is important. So I'm just going to finish this piece with a couple of tips on videoing yourself canoeing. Uh, the biggest thing I think people make the mistake of is they, they make the clip duration far too long. Uh, a couple of minutes worth, three minutes worth of the same viewpoint, it's boring. Uh, you're going to have people turning off uh, and finding another uh, YouTube film to watch. Um, you really, if I, if, I was, if I was videoing myself walking up a hill in, in the Lake District or in Shropshire, I'd keep the, the little video lengths to be maybe six seconds, seven seconds. Um, for canoeing, it's a little bit different. Keep the, the clips about 10, 10 seconds, 12 seconds, and you'll be about right. Uh, the other thing is, just keep, put in as many different perspectives as you can and that's where these these booms come in with all the different angles that's where all the little things like the chesty and the, 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 the cam attached to your head um, the little clamps that are inside the boat use as many of that as you can get plenty of variety keep them to about 10 or 12 second clips don't make a video too long um, the next thing I would say is you don't want to be videoing where it's a, a dead straight river. Uh, that, that, that can get tedious. Anytime you've got something that's interesting, let's say you've got some canoeists that are going past you, or you're going underneath a bridge, or you're going through a particularly tight piece on the river, or um, anything where there's something going on, there's some wildlife, some geese are flying over. Those are the things that you want to include in your video. 
uh, too much of the same view with the same landscape and the same trees um, isn't good so just mix it up as much as you can mix up the the subject matter include things like bridges include things like bends uh, a little bit of white water things like that uh, remember safety don't use the booms if if you're going through a tight gap or going underneath some trees uh, stop and take those booms down before you do that uh, keep the clip length short try and keep that horizon level uh, do what I you do use some editing software just to make those adjustments um, keep it looking professional yeah I think you'll be making some great videos